Hello everyone, what is up? Welcome back to my channel if you're new. My name is Brianna and welcome to a video that I've been putting off for a little while, which is my welcoming 2024 video. I am filming this on January 29th, so welcome 2024, it's already here. But the reason I waited a while was one, my life got a little crazy before the end of 2023 moving into 2024. So one, your girl just didn't have the time with her nine to five job, traveling a ton, things were happening in our family that just, I didn't find the time and I didn't wanna just throw a video on the internet and not be intentional. The second reason was it actually took me a while to figure out the goals that I had for 2024. I watched a few goal setting videos myself to get a little bit of inspiration, take what I had been jotting down throughout the last kind of two months of 2023 to be able to put them into a goals video. And I didn't just wanna throw what I thought were my goals, I wanted to kind of let them sit. And I actually already ended up changing a few. And I think doing your goals can be very fluid from what I'm learning about goal setting. So either way, here we are. Welcome to the video. Welcome to Welcoming 2024. In this video, we're going to talk about three things. We're going to do a little bit of reflection on 2023 that I'm very excited for. We're also going to be doing a 2024 goal. So we're going to talk all about my goals that I have set for myself for 2024. And then we're going to close out with my favorites of the year, things that I loved from 2023, whether that's products, books, TV shows, anything that I loved, you name it, we're going to talk about it. So with that being said, I do I feel like oh, I'm running a road race? Like what, what is going on here? So I'm like also hyped up because I had a coffee and I had a little breakfast this morning, but didn't have lunch yet because I'm filming this on my lunch break, hashtag corporate nine to five girly. So I am filming this on my lunch break because I want to get this video a up for you guys and I don't have time tonight to be able to do it. So to kick off the video, we are going to start with a 2023 goals and 2023 year reflection. I think reflection is the most important part of growth. I think if you are not spending time, dedicated time to reflect, talk about what happened, how you plan on moving forward, the goal setting, in my opinion, is irrelevant. Let's do a little bit of 2023 reflection and then we'll jump into my 2023 goals as well just to like see where we landed. First things first, 2023 was the first year that I actually ever set goals for myself. I had never been someone to categorize goals, talk about goals, do anything goal oriented. Not for a lack of I didn't want to set goals, but more from a place of I had just never done it. It had never been something that I was passionate about. It had never been something that I felt resonated with me. And so when I went into 2023, we made a big life change. We ended up leaving the city of Boston, moving back to my hometown, moving in with my parents to save up for our wedding. If you're new here, my name is Brianna. I have a fiance. We get married in September of this year of 2024, and we're saving up to buy our first home and pay for our wedding. And so there was just a lot of big changes that were coming. And I felt like, you know what? Let me challenge myself this year. I'm gonna challenge myself. I feel like I want a little bit more structure to my year. I wanna be able to tick off the box and create goals. And that was my first year ever doing it was 2023. And some of the goals also, we have big trucks driving down the street, so you're probably gonna hear them throughout this video. But I was so excited to set goals and I found at times I was just setting goals that I was watching other people set and they just felt trendy. And so I was setting that goal for myself so out of touch with goal setting last year. I feel like I was just setting goals that other people were setting in the hopes that they would then translate into my life. Big mistake, big, huge, never set goals because somebody else is setting them. Set them for yourself because you feel like they resonate with you and they are things that you're passionate about versus just ticking a goal off because you feel that you have to set that goal. And that was something I didn't really realize in 2023 that I realize now when it comes to goal setting. So we are gonna do a little bit of a reflection on my 2023 goals. I'll talk about if I hit the goal or if I missed the goal. So we'll go through that together now because I think it's important, like I said, to have a little bit of that reflection space. All right, so now let's get into the 2023 goals reflection. So I'm gonna put them up on the screen here. We're gonna talk about if I hit them, where I think I missed, or if I feel like this goal was just 
I was set up for failure. Honestly, like I set myself up for failure. So the first one was save $10,000. I did that. That was a big goal of mine was to really beef up my emergency fund, make sure that I was saving for long-term savings, saving for our wedding. I saved $10,000 and well over that. And that was something I was really, really proud of this year. And it was my first time ever setting a large financial goal. And that one actually felt very excited to accomplish. So I know that moving into 2024, but I want to bring that same energy energy. Next was to hit 6,000 subscribers on YouTube, which I did. And I hit it like right at the end of the year. And I, when I ever called Corey, I was in Iceland when I hit it. And I was like, Corey, can you believe it? I hit 6,000 subscribers on our beautiful little corner of the internet, our community. And it just brought me so much joy. Numbers on YouTube and Instagram and the podcast are always hard because like, you can't control your growth. You can't control who wants to stick around and spend time with you. I love that you guys want to spend time with me, right? But we outgrow people. We don't feel like they resonate with us. We feel like they're just not our cup of tea and that is okay. But it was a goal of mine to hit 6,000 subscribers and I did and I'm really proud of that. Next was read 30 books. Boy, did I set myself up for failure. Who in the right, who in their right mind let me set a goal of 30 books? I read when I feel like it. And I'm either reading a million hours a day or I don't read for four months. So that was a goal that I did not hit. And it just felt like I was trying to read in the beginning of the year because I had this goal. Not because I loved reading and was challenging myself on what I had done previously. I just said 30 books feels good, two to three books a month. Like, Brianna, where where was I getting that? I don't even know. So that one I set myself up for failure. And so that was something that I really translated into my 2024 goals as well, is just reshaping my mindset around that goal. Next was travel to Europe with Corey. We did that. We went to Italy. It was the best trip, trip of a lifetime. We had the most incredible time, incredible experience. I loved every last moment of it. And I am so glad that I could tick off that goal box. Next was find a morning routine I love. Zero. Zilch. Nothing. I, some days I wake up at seven o'clock, edit my YouTube, have a cup of coffee and like read and color. And other days she's getting out of bed at 845 for a 9 a.m. meeting in her pajamas, not brushing her teeth. So that was just not a goal. I did not find a morning routine I love. I'm not a morning routine girly. I'm just not. I struggle with it. It's hard for me to find a morning routine I love. And I don't necessarily want a morning routine. I want two or three things that are my morning non-negotiables. So we'll also talk about that when it comes to my 2024 goals. My next goal was to drink more water. This I did. I am not a water drinker, funny enough. I actually don't, I didn't used to love the taste of water. I know it sounds really foolish, but I wanted to just get more into drinking water. It felt like something that was important to me and that I wanted to really lean into. So I drank a lot more water this year, which was a great goal. Cook a new recipe once a month. This is like, it's a green goal for me, but I would say in the actual practice, it's a little bit yellow. We didn't cook a new recipe from a cookbook every single month, but we were tweaking our recipes every month. So I would say that we definitely did this, my fiance and I, Corey, because we love to cook, he loves to cook, we love to have fun in the kitchen, so I would say we definitely hit that. Next was going back to Disney World, we hit that, y'all know, we love to go to Disney World, we have such a love for it, it's an actual blast, it's a brain vacation, a complete disconnect, so yes, we ticked that goal off and we love going to Disney World. Next was unplug 30 minutes before bed. Again, zero. I don't know where I was thinking. I think in my heart of hearts, I know that I shouldn't be on my phone and shouldn't be on technology, but the idea of making that something that feels so rigid, I, I don't follow rules as it is. Where I made that goal, I set myself up for failure. There was no world where I was gonna unplug for 30 minutes before bed. It just wasn't something that I think I set myself up for success on. So definitely something we'll talk about as we move into the next goals. Find a way I enjoy moving my body. This one is, I did not hit this goal. However, what I did find out is that I do enjoy going on walks. When Corey and I would, it would be a nice summer night and we would go on like a 30 minute walk after dinner. I enjoyed that. I looked forward to a walk. So that's definitely something I'm incorporating into 2024. Next was take more photos with loved ones. This one I did. We were constantly taking photos with loved ones. My nephew, my niece, Corey's family, my family. We were taking so many photos this year. I have a zillion. So this is a goal that I definitely hit. Make six figures. I did make six figures this year 
year. I just got my W-2 in the mail and we surpassed what I thought I was gonna make. This is, in 2023, I made the most amount of money I've ever made across both of my sources of income with YouTube and my corporate job. So that was a big, like very proud of me moment. I'm so excited about that. I signed my first brand deal, zero. I did not sign my first brand deal. However, I did have the opportunity to work with Cuts for a few months and I did work with Free Prints as well. So I did get to work with a few places and Merit Beauty as well sent me some stuff to share in a video. So I did work with three really cool and fun brands, hoping to do a little bit more of that in the 2024 year. Enjoy wedding planning? Yes, that was a big tick off item. We enjoyed so much wedding planning this year. We took it so unbelievably slow to the point where literally in 2024 we signed a videographer we waited an entire year we just dragged out the process and honestly it made it fun it made it exciting it made it fun to scroll on tiktok and instagram and see what exactly we wanted so yes i enjoyed wedding planning explore a new town every month zero didn't have enough time we were traveling so much internationally and back to florida and to florida to visit my dad too much that we didn't do too much new town exploring, but we did take a lot of travel. So I'll say that where we didn't do a new town, we did a lot of just travel in general. Get a promotion at work, yes. Your girl got promoted to a senior position of the role that I'm currently doing. So a title and a pay raise and more responsibility. And I am proud of that because I work a really rigid nine to five job. I cannot just like kick rocks when I'm at work. I'm working from nine to five or 5.30 every day. And it is a challenge but I love my work and I love what I do and I love the coaching and mentoring and developing that I get to do. So getting a promotion was just a big pat on the back. Spend more time in the present. I do think I did that. There were a lot of times where I would wanna vlog or take short form content and I just put the phone away or put the camera away because I knew that it was important to spend time in the moment and I feel like I did that a lot this year. Take a class in something I enjoy, cooking, painting, etc. Zero, literally didn't do one. Set myself up for failure for that because I just, I just didn't set myself up in the right way. Next was post three videos a week on YouTube. This one was yellow. I really didn't, but for a long time, I was posting about three videos a week. So that I'm very excited about. Next was build an emergency fund. I did, I saved, I think it was four or $5,000 and built an entire emergency fund. Proud of myself for that because I've never had one since this very moment. Spend 730 hours outside. I hit that goal. I just barely scratched it when we went to Iceland because we were outside so much. So I'm proud to, Re rep reply all that I did in fact hit that goal. Next was make time for thoughtful moments with Corey. We did that a lot this year where we were doing game nights, the gingerbread house competition, little moments where we would before bed spend just a little bit more quality time together. And I feel like we got a lot closer in our relationship because of that. Post a podcast episode every week. We did not do. It is really hard to manage three different social media platforms. For any of you that do it, I commend you. It is so challenging to Try to be on YouTube and post two to three videos a week, be active on Instagram and be active on a podcast because there's just not enough time in the day when you're working a nine to five. Like where does the time come in? Like you, you just don't have the time. And it's something that we are working on this year where versus posting every single week, we actually give ourselves like a numerical number of episodes that we wanna post throughout the year. So I think we're in a really good spot for that. So again, that was my 2023 goal reflection. I feel like I did a really good job of setting some good goals in 2023 where also I think I needed to really move into a better space of finding the right goals versus setting just trendy goals. So with that being said, that was my 2023 goals reflection. So now let's get into my 2024 goals because I think that I've got some really good goals. I was even tweaking them again this morning just solely based on really thinking about what I've been doing already the last kind of few weeks and really not focusing on goals in the beginning of January because my life was chaotic. So I'm resetting for 2024 and creating goals from February onward. We're starting Feb 1. That's what we're doing. You don't have to start January 1. There's so much pressure around that. Just like start when you want. Like you can start on a Wednesday. So either way, let's get into my 2024 goals. Okay, so let's get into the 2024 goals. Also, I moved to the floor. I didn't know if I said that. I moved to the floor, felt like I want to be a little more grounded on the ground. So let's go into the goals. I broke these out into, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six categories this year. And the six categories that you're gonna see are financial, personal, health and wellness, travel, social media, and relationship. I will say that I did get a few ideas from Carter Sullivan and Magically Caitlin, Caitlin Kelly on YouTube. I will link both of their 
resetting for 2024 and reflecting on 2023 videos down below. I loved a lot of their goals and I also felt like sometimes the way that they would lay out their goals really resonated with me. So I wanted to credit them. They're also two of my absolute best friends. So I always want to hype them up whenever I can. So with that being said, let's get into my goals. We're going to start with financial. I'm going to go ahead and pop them up on the screen. Here are my 2024 financial goals. The first one is work on my all or nothing spending mentality. And then I have a drop down for those specifically, which is my limit my impulse spending and quality over quantity. I have talked about this a little bit on the internet because I'm not a big finance girly and I'm just starting to get into saving money and budgeting and all that. So I can't really give you too many tips, but one thing I have definitely been able to uh, identify about myself is that I have an all or nothing spending mentality where, for example, I'll give you two. I will order from Abercrombie and versus me saying, oh, I really need a new pair of jeans or I want a new pair of jeans. I go on Abercrombie and spend like $700 at one clip for like a hundred new things versus just buying two new items each month. I buy six to 10 in like a three month period, like all at one time. I've always been all or nothing. I've always been somebody who needs to have everything all at once. And it's something that I'm really going to work on this year. The first one is with limiting my impulse spending. I find that I, when I do spend, I can be very impulsive. Like if I go to Sephora and I need a mascara, new mascara because I'm out of mine, I spend $250 because I'm like, well, I'm already here. So if there's new things I wanna try, and I just, I never budget for it. I'm a very big impulse spender. So that's definitely something I am working on this year. And then the other one is quality over quantity. I've always been someone who will buy four pairs of Old Navy sweatshorts and then every year or two years get rid of them versus just buying the one pair from Abercrombie that's not on sale that I like the quality way better of. And so that's also something I'm working on is quality in my wardrobe, in my life, over the quantity. Buying like gimme hair ties over the goodie hair ties. They're better for your hair. I like the way that they hold my ponytails better, but they're more expensive. But like, that's okay, Brianna. You can invest in quality, smaller items in your life versus always buying a plethora of maybe lesser quality items. So really leaning into that in a financial goal this year. Next is pay off our entire wedding and mini moon. So this is something that's really important to Corey and I is we are drastically saving and putting a lot of our priority of saving into our wedding fund as well as being able to pay off and pay for our mini moon because I want to be able to by the end of the wedding, the minute we come back from the mini moon, not have one bill due, not have one thing lingering over our head and just make sure that the minute we get to our our wedding we don't have anything to pay for we're just there enjoying and we're not worried about finances so really leaning in and saving there is important to us and myself as well next is I would love to save nine thousand dollars in my long-term savings now originally this was like 10 or 12 and the reality is is I'm not gonna be saving a lot in that long, honestly, nine even feels pretty high. Maybe I would bring that down because we are gonna be saving a lot for our wedding this year and it just doesn't feel realistic to say, save $20,000 because I can't. There's just no way with the other financial priorities that we have that I'll be able to do that. So that one's a little bit of a work in progress, but I would love to save five, six, seven, eight, nine thousand dollars in our long-term savings account for our house deposit because I know that that's going to be coming up in the next two years. Next, I would like to pay off one smaller student loan. So the way that my student loan is broken up is by like four or five smaller student loans. Some are three thousand, some are two thousand, some are five thousand, and I would love to pay off one of the smaller ones just in total. So so that it doesn't need to aggregate with my monthly payment. So that's a big goal of mine. Next is I would like to upgrade my travel card. So I've had the same credit card, the only credit card I've had for about four years. And I would love to upgrade from the Capital One Venture to the Capital One Venture X. We travel a ton, the two of us, it's a big priority of our relationship along with I travel a lot for work. And the Venture X can get me into lounges, I get more miles, my miles go further. So I would love to look into upgrading our travel card. And then next, I would love to be in the mentality of my rollover money actually equals saved money. Normally I keep all of my rollover income just in my checking account and when I feel like putting money into savings I can but I actually want to prioritize of the majority of my rollover money whether that's a thousand, five hundred, twenty five hundred, whatever that might be immediately putting it into savings and not touching it. Again really helping with that like impulse spending because I won't have the money there to spend. So those are my financial goals. Now let's get into my personal goals for 2024. The first one is to do two new puzzles per month. I ended the year 
in my puzzle era. I was doing holiday puzzles, Christmas puzzles, Disney puzzles, travel puzzles, everything, and I loved it. I had so much fun doing puzzles and being off my phone and just having the TV on while I was doing puzzles. So that is a big goal of mine is being able to do two new puzzles per month. I also think it will take me off my phone a lot and that could change, right? Maybe one month I just do one puzzle, but I'm trying to do two. So I always have a puzzle out at one time. Next, I would like to watch the entire Marvel movie series in order. I have only seen one Marvel movie and it is Black Panther, which is so funny because my brother is such a big Marvel fan that I can't even believe that Corey and I have never prioritized watching them, but we just never were. And that is a big goal of mine this year is to watch every single Marvel movie so that we can get excited when the new ones come out into theaters. And it's a part of the Disney franchise, so I would love to watch every single one of those. Comment down below your two favorite Marvel movies. Just like because I want to know if like what are your favorites from the series. Next is I would like to prioritize hours of reading versus books read. I think this was actually one of the goals that I stole from Carter because like I said in the beginning reading 30 books felt like a chore and it was just setting me up for failure. Instead prioritizing hours of reading feels like it goes very hand in hand with my outside hours goal and just this idea of some days are more than others and that's okay versus a actual set numerical number. So so I put 365 hours of reading, which would be an hour a day. Like I said, there's times where I read for two, three hours a day. There's days where I read for 15 minutes and I'm just not in the mood. So I didn't want to give myself a big goal, but I did want to get back in reading because I enjoy it. And if I give myself a little goal, it might give me like a little taste to get more excited. My next goal for myself is to work on having this handle it once mentality. This was something that Jessica Braun talked about in her video, not her 2023 reflection, but I think her 2022 reflection where she had talked about this idea of handling things once for example you come in you take your shoes off you put your purse on the counter and then you walk in versus just taking off your shoes bringing them to the closet and hanging up your purse now you instead you have to do those things twice so trying to really work on when we come home unload the groceries put the grocery bags back in the car put the shoes away and leave the house the way it should be versus having to do things a plethora of times and i'm actually really excited about working on this goal mentally because i always find myself doing that just like dropping things and like not finishing and that's why like the house stays in chaos so really working on a handling things once mentality. Next is making my closet and wardrobe a one in one out. I am really trying to do a one in one out mentality. I have a lot of clothes. It's not always going to be this way, but for example, if I buy another pair of sweat shorts, one needs to go because I have too many. I have one behind and one pair of legs that wears shorts and it's just ridiculous that I have so much of this excessive stuff so really working on a one in one out in my closet so that my closet doesn't become overflowing but also still giving myself grace and allowing myself to buy a few new things at a time next is getting out of the house for an activity or adventure once a month so that could be us going to the movies going to a Hartford Wolfpack game going to a baseball game just doing an activity going to a brewery for the day and bringing our board games or cards cooking class etc just something to get out of the house I found that last year we would be not prioritizing as much getting out of the house because we were traveling so much so I really want to bring that to the forefront this year and then my last goal I actually took from Caitlin was just this like look good feel good mentality and I have the drop down there because I would love to start prioritizing more self-care I do but I don't prioritize it enough doing a face mask spending some time reading, having a me day. I just want to bring that to the forefront and my 2024 energy I think is important. Next is having sustainable morning and night routines and not necessarily a routine, but like non-negotiables. Like my non-negotiables for my nighttime routine should be skincare, 20 minutes of quality time with family and, um, you know, drinking a glass of water before bed. I don't know what those things are, but just like some non-negotiables that feel sustainable and not, you know, people that have these, you know, gargantuan morning and night routines. It's never something I'm gonna do. It's never something that's gonna resonate with me. I'm never gonna be good at it. So why put a goal that makes me just feel bad about myself? Like, I don't wanna do that. And then next is wearing through my closet and enjoying my closet. I just 
sit at my desk and wear my comfies all day, which is fine, but I wanna be able to enjoy wearing some sweaters and leggings or wearing jeans out on the weekends. Like, jump scare, like what a concept, but it is something that I wanna work on and really just enjoying and wearing through my closet. And I wanna look good and feel good, so putting on a little makeup and doing some things like that, I definitely think will help me. So next we have my health and wellness goals. The first one is embrace my natural beauty. So this is something that I have talked about a lot on my channel, things that bring me insecurity. I think I have dark under eyes. I have eczema on my mouth and all over my hands. I have, you know, curly hair that I didn't really know what to do with. And I really like threw it to the side when everyone was doing like, you know, curled hair and straight hair. And I just, everyone is naturally, why is this going to make me emotional? Like everyone is naturally beautiful. Like society should never tell you that certain parts of you are not beautiful whether it's your curly hair or your you know dark hair on your body or the way that your teeth are or your nose or your eyes or any part of you like you're naturally born so beautiful and anyone that says otherwise like is evil and i just am in this space in my life where i just want to embrace me and every part of me and just be naturally beautiful so sorry if that was like i didn't mean to like get a little emotional there but I just think it is so important and it is something I have not prioritized in myself in a while and like we are changing that in 2024 so with that I want to put less heat on my hair and today was a day that I did that this is my first time I've ever done a sit down video with my curly hair I'm working on it this one little piece you all know drives me nuts because it never wants to curl so I always tug it behind my ear but I want to embrace my natural curly hair I feel like I don't see a lot of curly hair girlies on the internet and it gets frizzy and it gets all over the place but like I love my curly hair and people pay to have a perm. So why is my curly hair not beautiful? So I'm working on that this year. Next is again, embracing my, well, I guess that was the first one, embracing my natural curls and finding a curly hair routine that I love, but also just like less heat on my hair. If I get out of the shower and let it air dry for a week, I don't have to do my hair. Putting it back in a claw clip is fine and just doing heat only one or two times a month is something I really want to lean into. And then next is a five step makeup routine and just like getting a little bit more put together for the day in 2023 I really challenged myself to do the opposite which was embracing my no makeup skin which I used to never ever do but finding a little five-step makeup routine that I can do in one two or three minutes in the morning feels good like today I did a five-step routine so I'll share with you what I have on because I'm proud of it I have on my La Ro I can link them down below but I have on my La Roche Posay tinted sunscreen hourglass concealer a little bit of the Laura Mercier translucent setting powder just to set everything in place I have on my dibs blush stick and then I also have on some Tarte mascara and I guess the sixth one is just like my Summer Fridays lip mask, but or like Summer Fridays uh, lip butter balm, but I am feeling good. Like I feel like my skin is skinning. I'm really happy with how it turned out and I literally have three to four products on. Like why can't I do that? Why do I need to have always full glam? And I love to do my makeup, so I will always have a lot of glam, but on a regular day when I'm vlogging and working at my desk, like I can get beautiful. Like you can be beautiful at your desk in a little routine. So anyway, embracing my natural beauty is something that I'm really focused on. Next is moving my body a way I enjoy. So not finding a way, but just moving it in a way I enjoy. So the first one would be going to the gym two times a week in the winter. So I did sign up for the gym, yay, go me, so that I could tan as well. That's what's gonna get me there. I'm a little rewards girly, but walking on the treadmill and just like getting my body moving because I cannot be sedentary. I just want to move my body and feel like I'm doing something good for me. And the next is I'm going to call them W3s. We can do them in the summer together, which is a warm weather walk. So I'm going to call them W3s and they're going to be walks that I take during the summer for an hour, 20 minutes, four hours, whatever that might be, and just do some W3s, some warm weather walks. Next is trying two or three new recipes per month, two preferably from a cookbook. We have been in our cooking era, especially Corey. He got a pasta maker for Christmas. We've got a wok, we've got a food processor, we've got all these fun gadgets, and I am really enjoying trying new foods and not being stuck doing the same chicken rice veg every night for dinner. So we're gonna try some new recipes and really give ourselves like a big, push outward for some new recipes and then next is 670 outside hours that is basically february to january or excuse me february to the end of december two hours per day outside now the reason that it doesn't say 730 is because i didn't really do them in january but if i can get to 730 great it is hard to get outside sometimes during the winter so 
two hours a day yeah it sounds great in theory but I also want to make sure I'm feeling realistic and I didn't start in January so I'm just gonna give myself 670 this year which again still equates to two hours a day starting in February next on the list we have my travel goals for 2024 so the first one is a new Disney experience I don't know what this is gonna be this could be a Disney cruise and adventures by Disney it could be you know a savor the Savannah or an African wild trek and animal kingdom just I want to do something new at Disney and have a new Disney Disney experience because I feel like that's what brings a lot of the Disney magic and like keeps us coming back is the idea of being able to try and do a lot of new things so I want a new Disney experience this year and I'm excited for that and to try to find something along that realm next is stay at a new Disney Resort this one's a little bit of a cheat we are staying at a new Disney Resort in March but either way I always like to give myself one to two new resorts a year to keep it fun and spice it up next is book two New England weekends or staycations this could be something where in the summer, Corey and I take a weekend and we go to Cape Cod, or we take a weekend and we go to a Gunquit, Maine, or just something fun here in New England. There is so much beauty that lies just a few hours outside of us, and I want to be able to book some weekend staycations for us to, again, get out of the house, try something fun, but also not break the bank. I think so many times we believe, and especially last year for us, Travel was a plane, but travel doesn't have to be a plane. Travel can be an hour away from you, 15 minutes away from you, and you can experience something totally new right within your backyard. So I challenge you to think about travel being right at your fingertips versus always having to be really far away. Next is I would like to explore four new cities that could be in Connecticut, Rhode Island, Massachusetts, in Europe, literally anywhere. I just want to go to four new like major cities or like cities in general. What those will be, I don't know. I just want to see a little bit more locally and I think that could be a fun goal to try to achieve and almost stacking like the New England weekends with the four new cities so that we can see some fun new things. And then last for travel is plan our honeymoon. We are not going on our actual real big honeymoon until 2025, but we need to plan it. And we're not really doing that right now, so we need to have it booked by the end of this year. So that is a goal of mine for travel is to actually get our honeymoon planned. And this year we don't have any big European grand adventures planned because we're getting married. So we don't have a lot going on with that. Next, let's get into my social media goals for the year. The first one is to receive PR from some of my favorite brands. I've really never received just PR showing up at the house with like a cute little note and something. So if you're a brand that you've seen me love to work with you, I would love to receive PR, not from like a oh, that's like, I don't want to pay for their products, but just like, I love them and it would make me feel just, I don't know, like cool and fun and fresh. I feel like people get PR and some people just like discard and, you know, don't really have a ton, but I don't know. I feel like as a small creator, that could be really cool. Next would to be, be hosted by a hotel. So an entire stay paid for. Oh no, my camera battery is going to die one minute. All right. Sorry if the angle changed, but we're back. Camera battery, nice, fresh and recharged. So with that, be hosted by a hotel. I would love to have a hotel one night or two night stay completely like comped or paid for so that Corey and I can experience like a new city or something fun and actually be hosted by somebody I think that would be really really fun and cool and then next I actually broke out my social media goals by YouTube Instagram and the podcast page so we're gonna go through these as well for YouTube my three goals are 110 videos versus like three videos a week and the reason I say that is because there are times where I might have four videos go in a week and then there might be weeks where I have one just because life gets a little bit crazy for example we love to post the disney series like fast because you guys love those videos we also love to post like i love to every single month post a monthly coffee chat and like maybe a reset or two but there's times where maybe i'm not available to film a lot in a week's time but the week before i might film like a vlog week where I vlog every day. So I don't know, I just wanna do videos versus videos per week. I feel like that's a little bit more attainable. Next is, I would love to hit 10,000 subscribers on YouTube. I originally had a goal of 12,000, however, that feels really out of touch. Thinking that I could be able to double the subscribers on my channel in one year feels a little bit out of like tune and feels just like a too far of a stretch. And then in addition to that as well, I feel like my growth's been a little stagnant recently. My views are a little bit down, which is okay like that it, it just doesn't matter I'm doing this because I love it and because it's fun but that doesn't mean I also don't want growth and to grow our community here and it be full of more 
beautiful people that could be here so I want to grow but I also want to be realistic in my growth and then the last one is sign my first brand deal or paid partnership that could be something where I work with HelloFresh or I work with Brick Linen or I work with you know Sephora or Merit or Way where they actually pay to sponsor a video on the channel versus sending you know a product and then if anyone buys something through a link it's commissionable I want to really get into maybe one or two of my like brand deal like paid partnership eras i think it could be really fun and i know i'm a small little creator but i also think we have a really tight-knit community around here and i think that could be a really great goal for myself so those are my youtube goals next for my instagram goals are 70 in feed posts on instagram so that could be reels an individual photo photo dumps whatever that might be the reason i didn't put like per week or per month is for example like this is mundane life right now i will post about it but i don't have anything like groundbreaking but when we come back from disney and like after the wedding i feel like i'm gonna have so much fun to share that i might post like every day for 500 days so i might have a lot more to share so i just want to be able to post 70 in feed things what those things are i don't know comment down below what do you want to see on instagram instagram is more of my like fun hey how you doing like back i don't want to call it back burner but it's just i like youtube the most out of any platform that i have and so when i get on instagram sometimes i forget about it sometimes i don't but either way i still love it and want to be able to post more in my feed next is 5,000 followers on instagram i think i'm at about 2800 right now so almost like doubling where i'm at but again i want it to be fun i want it to be engaging i want it to be just like a cute little part of our community as well a little bit more like in real time i would love to engage and interact with other content creators i find that i just like photos and that's great but i want to like message people more and i want to comment on people's posts more and share people's posts more and just be more engaged with content creators that i follow because in theory i want people to do that with me and like comment on my posts and comment on my youtubes because that is how we actually get to connect with our community so i want to be able to do that for other people because i would want that for me so kind of like treating someone how i would want to be treated so i want to engage more with people and the next is just to be more active on my stories i feel like there's times where i am active and then there's times where i'm like not active at all so i just want to make that a little bit more of a priority and then we get into the podcast so the goal is 35 episodes not an episode a week because we we go on vacation and we're gonna get married and life happens but we want to post 35 episodes this year and we also want to go live twice a month because we love going live on the podcast page it is so fun on instagram we love it and just being able to like chat disney with you guys and just life with you guys i would love to get to 2,000 followers on the podcast instagram because we're at about 720 right now and i think the more that we grow on instagram our audience will also grow i think our podcast is fun i listen to it on my own accord you all right beautiful reviews on the podcast so i want to grow that part of my social media because it's fun it's just a place where Corey and i get to have our own little like community together and i just really enjoy it so i want to grow there i would love to also have 700 spotify listeners so when i look at my analytics it says that i have seven no not seven 371 listeners that like follow the podcast on spotify i would love to grow that to 700 and then i'd like to post on instagram two times a week whether that's like in our stories a little bit more interactive or in feed posts just like be more active on the podcast page the podcast and the instagram always take a back seat to youtube but i really want to prioritize that this year because it's also something where Corey and i can spend a lot of time together is doing the podcast and we both enjoy it together so i would love to really make the podcast a priority this year because we enjoy it and it means that we get to spend time together talking about something that we love so with that let's get into my last set of goals for the year which is my relationship i have these broken out into two this was also something that i stole from caitlin actually actually magically caitlin i can have her video linked down below i loved that she broke these out into like her personal relationship you know with her husband her friendships and her family we have a lot of family time around here so i didn't put a family like priority one in here we're just always with family so i prioritized fiance so me and corey and then my friendships as well so the first one for corey and i was have two date nights per person one at home and one out per month we have not done a lot of out outside date nights 
since we've moved back into my mom's not for any bad reason we just don't prioritize it we have been in really high space jobs and traveling a lot so we've just wanted to spend more like relaxing cozy time at home versus actually going out and about but i want to prioritize that this year and then next would be game nights so being able to do like board game nights once a once or twice a month or once or twice a week depending because we have a lot of board games and a lot of games and I just want to be able to do that more and spend some more like phone time away quality time together playing games and the next would just be being present and spending thoughtful moments together that is something that I really leaned into in 2023 and it's something I'm carrying over into 2024 where we just sit and we talk and we laugh and the phones go away and it is important that you prioritize little moments with your significant other and your partner because if you don't there are times where Corey and I will be talking and we're just laughing and goofing but one of us is on the phone and he'll say to me like are you listening to me or I'll say to him like did you hear me like are you are you listening like do you have to be on your phone and so just like dedicating that being present and spending quality time with your significant other is so important and then lastly it's just like flirt with each other and being more romantic and spontaneous Corey and I have been together for it'll be seven years in like two weeks like I have been with Corey since I was 20 years old I'm 27 right now and we have just spent our entire life in our 20s growing with each other I didn't live like a big going out lifestyle in college I, I did at times but not really and so I feel like we just kind of grew through our 20s together but like I still want to flirt with him and like be spontaneous and like do fun things together because I feel like that will keep our relationship fun and interesting and when you're together with someone for so long parts of it do become work not that I have to work hard to love him but I have to work hard to keep him and I think that we often forget that you keep somebody because you keep them front of mind not just because you're just getting married so you've committed and then next going into friendships the first one is dedicated FaceTime date nights with friends during the month uh, Caitlin is probably literally laughing watching this because there's times like in the last few weeks where I just call her and we talk for like three hours like out of nowhere just like out of the blue and I love that but I should be dedicating actual time like hey are you free on Wednesday night we should FaceTime so I don't like suck her whole night from underneath her or like pull the rug from out from under her or like I do it to Carter I do it to my best friend Angela and I just want to like create FaceTime dates where we can chat with the girlies my friend Casey is also someone you know when they're farther away and you can't always like get to them like I'm right down the street from Angela like 15 minutes but my other friends that I'm farther away from just like dedicating more time to that next is out of the house activity with friends and couples like once or twice a month so that could be with my brother and sister-in-law that could be with my you know his other sister-in-law and you know her boyfriend Corey's family that could be with like Angela and Ricky two of our best friends or just like getting out of the house and doing things with other couples and friends like groups of friends too I think would be great and then the last thing is just like text your friends back Brianna uh, there's times where I leave texts unread for like four hours just because I don't feel like responding but like I want to work on that like I gotta get better at just responding or just saying hey really busy day today let's chat before bed or like I'm not in a texting mood like just being open and honest no friend is gonna be mad at that so I think that's just something very important that I want to prioritize as well so those are my 2024 goals this is also something that I had shared on Instagram back in 2023 but it is something that I am really bringing into 2024 and it is focus on the first step and not the whole staircase like I said, I have a very all or nothing mentality. I used to run up the staircase, slip and fall, then I would get burnt out almost at the top and then I would just roll back down. And this year I am focusing on just one little joyous moment at a time. With that, that is gonna conclude the 2024 goals segment of the video, which I'm so happy. I feel like I've got great goals this year. They all feel attainable. They all make me feel super motivated. Also, this video is probably a long one. So I hope that you cracked open a soda or a drink because we still got one last segment left to go. And I'm gonna stay on the floor for it because I want to. But that is my 2024 goals. And now we are gonna get into my favorites of 2023. So now we are getting into the segment of my 2023 favorites. So which is all of my favorites from last year and everything that I like found last year that I absolutely loved. I have them on my phone, so we're gonna go through them together. But my first favorite thing that I loved that I got into at the end of 2023 were my winter Doc Martin boots. They were the best shoe that I bought the entire year. Like I 
absolutely love them. I love them with jeans. I love them with leggings. I love them for traveling. They are so warm, so comfortable. They took no time at all to break in. With a thick sock, I loved them. Like in addition to that shoe category, my other favorite from 2023 were my grandpa New Balances. Corey hated them. I think he's starting to grow on them. But these shoes, so comfortable, so smushy and I think that they're really cute. They're not everyone's cup of tea, but I loved them and I feel like I always gravitated towards wearing them. So I absolutely loved those. Next were my Summer Fridays Lip Butter Balms. You guys, these things are like a drug. They are comfortable. They are nourishing. They give your lip a little bit of color depending on if you have one of the lip butter balms that offers color or it's just like a gloss over. I have 10 of these on at a time and whenever I have one in my hand, I always have to be putting it on. I could have a, I could have just put it on and I want to put more on again. So if you are not on the Summer Fridays lip butter balm train, get on that train because it is the best lip product in the world. Next is my Stanley. I love having that Stanley. I feel like that's what makes me drink the most water. I love that it fits in the cup holder. I do have two sizes. I have one of the 40 ounces in the white and then I have like the 30 or the smaller ounce in the green. Part of me actually likes the little one more because I feel like I enjoy filling it up more because I feel like it's making me believe that I'm drinking more water more frequently. So that one I actually like a lot. I like the smaller size, but I just like enjoy it in general. I think those were a great, great purchase for me for 2023. And I just love that cup in general. Next would be my little crew socks from Amazon. They're like the thicker, like ribbed around like white sock. And I just love the look of them. I love them in the winter. And I feel like now my ankles are never cold and even in the summer wearing those with like a little sneaker and sweat shorts is just really cute and I actually love them and you never your sock never falls under your ankle. I've worn them in Disney, I've worn them traveling and they are now like the only sock that I gravitate towards wearing and pulling out from my drawer. Next is a recommendation from Jessica Braun and wow do I love it and wow has it helped Corey's dry skin, my dry skin, my eczema and everything. It is the Dr. Jart Ceramidin like skin barrier repair cream. This moisturizer, let me tell you, life-changing. Like the best new moisturizer that I've ever brought into my winter routine and throughout the summer too because it's for your skin barrier. So when it's freezing cold, it's perfect and gives it more hydration. When you're at the beach and you're in the sun all the time and you're constantly showering and your skin is drying out faster, it just like absorbs all into your skin. It is incredible and by far one of the best skincare products that I have found and was recommended this year that I actually believe lives up to the hype. Next is the Drunk Elephant DeBronzy Drops. Now these are controversial because yes you can find a dupe for them absolutely. Love them. It gives me just that right amount of like natural beauty confidence that I need when it's the winter and your skin is on the paler side or you want to feel a little bit more tan and you want to have a little bit more life to your appearance. I love them and I actually think that having those on my skin with just like a little bit of mascara and blush is probably going to be maybe part of my like quick makeup routine during the day. They're very natural. I love using them at Disney with just like a little bit of extra powder on top for the park so I have a little something on my skin and they just make me feel really confident and I feel like my skin radiates a nice glow so I love those. Next is my Target mug. I don't have it in here. I just recently got them like right at the end of 2023 but there are these Target mugs. They they are the perfect size, they are cute and aesthetic, and the cup fits. It has like a lip on the bottom so that the cups and mugs can stack one into the other. Why don't all mugs have the same lip like that? Because then they fit in the cabinet so nice, and I never have to worry about them. So I love that Target mug. Next favorite is, last like lifestyle-y product, this. These are the Abercrombie essentially oversized hoodies. They are so comfortable. They are the perfect size. I buy mine in a large for like a bigger oversized, like as you can tell, like a bigger oversized fit. I have the gray one in a large and then I have the black and the brown in a medium. The mediums are still oversized. They're a little bit tighter on my butt. So if you don't maybe have a butt or like wider thighs, maybe the medium would be the perfect size for you. I wear those like front tucked with jeans for like an oversized fit but not super baggy whereas this one is like my snuggly cozy one 
quality incredible i don't gravitate towards any of my other sweatshirts anymore this is like all i want to be in it is so warm it is incredibly soft and comfortable so now let's get into my four favorite books of the year from 2023 again I wasn't in like too big of a reading space like I kind of fell off towards the latter half of the year but I still read some good books that I wanted to share my first favorite was The Perfect Marriage I read that one on my Kindle man that was a five-star read for me so incredible I absolutely loved it big twist and it was my first book that I had ever read start to finish on my Kindle and it actually got me really into my Kindle so I think it holds like kind of a special place in my heart but by far one of my favorite thrillers next was the housemaid best book of the year I, for, I love that was my first frieda mcfadden book and man did it hook me on her writing that book was incredible i could not put it down it was a huge suspense thriller loved every single moment of it so that was my one of my other favorite books of the year next was the inmate by frieda mcfadden that one was just as good if not better than the housemaid if you have not read those two books by frieda mcfadden those are by far two of the best thrillers i have ever read it very much gives like sherry lapina thriller vibes but honestly at times a little bit better in the way that the plot spins and i just i love it they're not scary they're just like Oh my, like you audibly say oh my god while you're reading and then the last one which is very funny because it's not in the thriller category is every summer after this book best romance book i've ever read i'm not a romance girly i did not like people we met on vacation i do not like those cheesier romance books it's really hard for me to follow through the storyline but that book was just really incredible like i loved every summer after i loved the writing i loved the back and forth i thought it was so unbelievably good it was an incredible read i absolutely loved it so if you have not read that i would recommend that as like a summer read as well you'll absolutely fly through it and then my last well actually i have five my last favorite book of 2023 which i read in the beginning was the seven husbands of evelyn hugo I waited to read that book for a while because I knew it was going to be good and everyone talked about it and I wanted to hold off on reading it and I did and let me tell you it was just incredible it was fab it was great I loved every last page of it it was just a good story like I feel like I hadn't read a good story that didn't have to be a thriller or didn't have to be two people coming together and falling in love it was just a great story so if you have any other books that you recommend that are similar to the seven husbands of evelyn hugo please put those down in the comments below because i would love love to read them so with that being said that is going to be our welcoming 2024 video i feel like i've been chatting forever this is probably a long one i'm out of breath i'm starving because i'm filming this on my lunch break so now i need to rush heat up lunch and jump to my next meeting in the next like 10 minutes here but with that this was so fun i'm so excited that we got to do this together you guys because i feel like i delayed my 2024 goals for the first month of the year and honestly i feel more rejuvenated now to get my like ass in gear and kick started for 2024 that now i'm just feeling really energized and rejuvenated also why did both of the brunies fall over like this is why i think that stuffed animals are real either way i digress but if you have not yet subscribed to the channel, make sure to do so down below and give the video a big thumbs up and turn on your post notification bell so you never miss when I upload a new video. But let's have an incredible 2024. 2024 is our year. I know it, you guys. I just know it. But I love you guys so much. Thank you for being here and I will see you in the next one. Bye, everyone.